Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war would rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desire of the Lord, that I may seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me. In his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger, Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my mother, my father, and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me. When such hath breathed out cruelty, I had fainted. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. This now begins our official wake portion for our beloved Deacon Harsley Mosley. At this time, those of you who have not yet had opportunity to view, you do have the opportunity at this time to view. We'll take a few moments before we go into our wake services. Amen. Amen.
At this time, we'll begin the wake portion of our services. You're still more than welcome to come view. Those who have not yet viewed ushers, you still may admit viewers and worshipers into the sanctuary as they enter in and encourage them to view even as we prepare ourselves to continue and begin our wake portion of our services. Deacon Mosley was a member of this branch of Zion for over 20 years, and we are indeed sorrowful of his transition, yet we rejoice in the fact to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We know that this pandemic has things on lock and things are switched up because of all that's happening throughout the world, but those of you who are watching over live stream, YouTube live and Facebook live and any other live that you are streamed into today, we welcome you to this celebration of life for our own Deacon Horace Mosley. At this time, we're going to begin our remarks and special tribute. I'm gonna ask if our chairman, Deacon Darren Johnson, he would come and give us remarks and special tributes. I'm going to ask that Sister Dina Vick, if you're still out there, amen, if you would come and give us remarks on behalf of our ushers, amen, amen, amen. amen. And then the Reverend Kevin Jefferson, he'll come and close out our remarks section, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Giving all honor to God. I take it as an honor to stand here before you and uh, speak a few remarks about our beloved brother, Deacon Horace Mosley. He and I joined Great Harvest closely around about the same time. And ever since I've been a part of this, this great body, this congregation, Deacon Mosley has presented himself as a excellent example of a servant leader. As a senior statement of this church, he never took that as a, 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 a way of putting himself above others. 
he continued to serve. Regardless of what he was called to do, he was ready and quick to the call. As a member of the male choir, I know I bugged him a lot. I know I bothered him. I said, Deke Mosley, you need to stay on my right side. I said, because you got to help me stay in tune. That, that bass section of the male choir is going to be going surely missing. But we know that choir in heaven is going to get a lot deeper now. That deep bass voice of his really just shook you. Because when he did it, he did it from his, from his inner soul, from his heart. He loved to serve the Lord. From Pastor Gilliard to Pastor Brown, he was always there supporting his pastors. He supported his church, and he supported me. When I was appointed to this position as a younger deacon, he looked at me as, as someone to help. You know, he, he never took that as a slight to him or whatever, but he was always ready to lift me up. And whenever when I made a mistake or whatever, he never corrected me in public. He never made me feel bad. He was always at help. Dick Mosley, we're going to truly miss you. And this is a time for celebration. Because when a true servant of the Lord leaves this earthly realm, we know he's in the presence of the Lord. So I might shed tears of sadness, but we know sadness has nothing to do with our joy. Because my heart is filled with joy right. for being able to share and experience the few years that we had together. So I thank God for Brother Mosley, for the family. You know, we, you have our deepest sympathy, and we're constantly praying for you because this church family is always his church family, and we'll always be here for you. God bless you. Thank you. Pastor, Greater Hawks family, I want to give thanks to God. I want to send out our condolences and our ministry to the family of Deacon Hawk Mosley, who was a very fine deacon, always there to help anybody. And every Wednesday, he was always here. There was nobody else to see. So from the usher ministry, we want to send out prayers and condolences. Have a blessed day. Reverence for Almighty God, our Father, to our pastor, to the diggers, members, and to the family. It's a privilege and an honor to have served with Digging Mosley. I have so many memories of Digging Mosley that I will keep us going. One Digger Mosley was one to be heard. I can recall in worship, the whole congregation feeling the move of God and everybody saying amen. And then all of a sudden you hear this baritone voice say amen. <laughs> he was one to be heard. Not only was he one to be heard, he was one to be seen. He was a sharp dresser. He worked at um, Men's Warehouse, I believe, K and, K and G. And I went there once and he, he hooked a brother up. He was family and we loved him and we're gonna miss him. But we know that this must be that he had to transition to get his crown. But one day, we're gonna meet him again on the other side. 
And when I get to the other side, I believe he's going to be standing there, as Dick said, singing in his baritone voice with the angels, singing holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. And I believe he's going to have a white robe on, saying, I made it through the hard times. I made it through pain and suffering. And I believe he's going to worship God like never before. And when we all get to heaven, ain't no sense of trying to wait until you get over there. We ought to worship God right now for the life of Diggin Mosley. I pray to the family that God will continue to keep you and comfort you and shine his light on you. Hold on. And if you want to cry, go on and cry. Because you got to get all your tears out over here. Because over there where Diggin Mosley is, no more tears. Because God's going to wipe every tear from our eyes. Family, we love you. God bless you. As our resolution and everything is prepared to be read, remarks, and letters, those of you who have not yet had opportunity to view, you can still continue to view even now if you had not opportunity to view and greet the family at a distance. Amen. If you're going to greet them, give them a little air hug and keep it moving. Amen. 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 So if you do desire to come view, if you had not opportunity, you can do so even now as we continue with our cards, letters, and all of that nature. Amen. gratefully acknowledges the many kind and beautiful expression of sympathy and love shown during their hour of need. Hoping prayers might ease your sorrow. So sorry, dear friend, for the pain that you bear and the loss that you're feeling right now. But please understand that deep in their hearts, friends want to help you somehow and want you to know that they are hoping brighter days will be coming your way and that time and the prayers of so many who care will lessen your sorrow each day. Harlem Garden, Gardens Tenant Council, Alan Jones President, Ronald Gibson Vice President. Sharing your sorrow. I will comfort them and give them gladness from their sorrow. Jeremiah 31 and 13. Sharing your loss and praying that God will guide you through this sad time with every sympathy. Ms. Rosie Johnson, 1700 Emerson Avenue, apartment 416. I have a resolution from the West Street Christian Church, 721 West Street, New Bern, North Carolina. To the family of Diggin' Horace Mosley, for it is in times like these that we can rely on the promises of God through Christ Jesus. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm going away to prepare a place for you. God will wipe away the tears from your eyes. Eyes have not seen, Ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for us. But thanks be to God who has given us the victory through Jesus Christ. Allow these promises from God comfort you now and in the days to come. Submitted in love and sympathy, Reverend Dr. R. E. Midget, Midget Sr., Pastor. Resolution in loving memory for our beloved Deacon Horace Lee Mosley. Those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Jesus Christ. Whereas the Almighty God, in His own infinite wisdom, 
saw fit to transition from earth to glory, our beloved Deacon Horace Lee Mosley, the pastor officers and members of the Greater Harvest Baptist Church bow our heads in humble submission to a wise God who knows and doth all things well and offer our heartfelt sympathy to the Mosley family. The Greater Harvest Baptist Church family express to the Mosley family and to his niece, our very own Sister Priscilla Walston, on this the sixth day of December, 2020, that our hearts are full as we gather together in unity to say goodbye to a great man of God. We, his church family, have joy in knowing that Diggin Mosley is now finding rest, a glory, a glory beyond the river. To the family, we know your sorrow is great, and we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that our loss is heaven's gain. Be it resolved that Diggin Mosley was truly a child of God. Diggin Mosley united with the Greater Harvest Baptist Church on June the 4th, 2000, under the leadership of the late Reverend Earl D. Gilliard Sr. He was a faithful, loyal, dedicated member. In the earlier years, Diggin Mosley served on the ushers ministry and the music ministry. Reverend Gilliard appointed and ordained him to the diaconate ministry in 2005. After Reverend Gilliard's passing, Diggin Mosley continued to be faithfully and served on the diaconate under the leadership of Reverend Brent A. Brown until our Lord called him home. Diggin Mosley most recently sang with the men's choir and was a big part of the men's ministry. Diggin Mosley so loved leading devotionals on Sundays and during our midweek noonday service. And now, we pause to pay our tribute of love, affection, and respect to his memory. His Lord said unto him, well done, hey, thou good and faithful servant, hey, glory. Mm. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. This church resolution is declared on this day, Sunday, December the 6th, 2020. Humbly submitted, Greater Harvest Baptist Church, Reverend Brent A. Brown, pastor, Digging Darren Johnson, Diagonet Chairman. Our morticians are coming even now to prepare us for our final viewing for the family.
depend on God. Oh, yes, I can depend. Come on, have a little church wow. Oh, through the storm, through the rain, through sickness and through pain. was loved through our family and I also want to say that it's not all the little things that you go in between is just where you end up um, we know Horsley's story and it's a beautiful story of his journey and how he ended up here at Greater Harvest and our family all over the place because of course everyone is not here um, everyone is watching um, we just thank everyone for embracing Horsley thank you Amen, amen, and amen. Well, there's a land beyond the river that we call the sweet forever. And we only reach that shore by faith's decree. One by one, we'll gain the portals there to dwell with the immortals when they ring the golden bells for you and for me. Can't you hear the bells now ringing? Can't you hear the angels singing? Tis the glory, hallelujah, jubilee in the land of sweet forever, just beyond the shining river when they ring the golden bells for you and for me. The bells of heaven have rung on today and we've come to celebrate the life of Deacon Horace Lee Mosley. Can you open up this service with those of you who are in the sanctuary and give God a thunderous hand clap of praise? Those of you who are in our virtual sanctuaries watching from all over, come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise from wherever you are. Thank God for the life of Deacon Mosley. Come on, come on. Thank God. Well, I open a hymn of praise, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, over oh, the foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Hymn selection 508 for those of you in the sanctuary. With the exception of our immediate family here, we're going to ask if everyone else will stand and rise as we lift this opening hymn of celebration on this evening. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending bring from above echoes. Whispers of love ring the course out. This is. This is my song, 
for raising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. submission all is at rest perfect submission all is at rest I in my Savior am happy and blessed watching His goodness lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. And my savior. Say he had, he had a story. He had a song praising his savior all the day long. Personal. I have, I have a story, I have a song, praising my Savior all the day long. I have a story, I have a song, praise it. Hallelujah. 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 Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I shall not stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me. I ain't been in afternoon service in a long time, so y'all might as well bear with me. Mm, say lead, lead. Yeah, alone. Oh. The way, the way. For if you lead me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Shall not stray. Lord, let me. Stay, stay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Say, lead me. As the instruments continue to play softly, God is so kind that he gives us privilege and opportunity to have a little talk with him. We talk with our God on what we affectionately call the wings of prayer. And while I may not pray exactly like you, and while you may not use the exact words I use, the good news is, is that when we pray, we got a God that'll hear our prayer as well as answer our prayer. Have I got a witness that he's a prayer answering God? 
come in and take us to the throne of grace, Deacon Chandler Smith. I'm gonna ask if he would come lead us in the thro to the throne of grace. God is so kind that he not only allows us to hear from or to talk to him, but he gives us privilege and opportunity to hear back from him. We hear from God through his holy word. Coming with our Old Testament scripture reading, Deacon Tia Stokes, followed by our New Testament scripture reading, Deacon Leo Kotman, in that order. God bless you. Shall we bow our heads? Father God, we come before you right now being grateful and thankful. Let me say it two times, being grateful and thankful for the life of Deacon Moses. We thank you for his due diligence. And even in this time of earthly sorrow, we recognize that there is heavenly joy because heaven receives one of his own. Well-deserved, well-deserved. Deacon Mosley, we thank you for his diligence, his faithfulness, his promptness. Lord, we thank you for all of the highways and byways that he has traveled that brought him to us. Lord, I personally thank you for Deacon Mosley. As a young deacon, to, to learn is to look and to see this man on his post every Wednesday, every Sunday, whether he could lift it or he was just present. We thank you for his presence and his seniority as a deacon. Right now, we ask that you bring comfort to the family because they have truly lost a jewel, but heaven has gained an angel. We ask that you continue to just cover us all with the grace and mercy that you have bestowed upon the greater harvest family and the harsh family. We ask all these things in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Shall not, shall not stray. Say, Lord, let me walk, Lord, let me walk each day, each day, hallelujah, each day, lead me, lead me, lead me, say, lead me, oh, Lord. the family with the love of our Savior Jesus the Christ. Our old scripture attested, our old scripture reading is coming from Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 through 12. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to harvest, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build up, a time to cry, and a time to laugh, a time to grieve, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to turn away, a time to search, and a time to quit searching, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and time for peace. What do people really get out of all their hard work? I've seen the burden of God, that God has placed on all of us, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity into the human heart. But even so, people can't see the whole scope of God's work from the beginning to the end. So I concluded that there is nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We bless the Lord. I read from the book of John, John 14, 
six verses, starting at the first verse. This is the word of the Lord. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto my soul. That where I am, there you may be also. And whether you go, you know, in the way you know. Thomas said unto Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And no man coming to the Father but by me. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Can you say, hey, can you say praise be to God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Well, hymn selection 404, time is filled with swift transition. None on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. One of the hymns Deacon Mosey would open up noonday service with on Wednesdays. Can we sing it to the glory of God? 404. is filled with swift transition not of earth unmoved can stand build your hopes on things eternal hold to God's unchanging hand you ought to hold to his hand God's unchanging hand, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand, build your hopes on things eternal, hold to God's unchanging hand, trust in him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring, if thy earthly friends forsake us, still more closely to him cling. Cover not this world vain riches that so rapidly decay. Seek to gain thy heavenly treasures. They will never pass away. Lift the cause, hold to his God's unchanging. Well, 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 hold. God's unchanging hand. You ought to feel your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God. Last verse. When this journey, when your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, fair and right your home in glory, your enraptured soul will view. You are to hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. 
well, 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 ho. Come on, we come to celebrate a soldier of the Lord. You ought to hold to his hand. God touch changes. Well, 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 ho. God touch changes hands. Feel your hopes on things eternal. One last time, everybody got a hold to his hand. God shall change his hand. Well, well, hold. You ought to feel your hopes on things in turn. Musicians, play it out one more time. Ho! something real quick and we're moving on with the service but when Deacon Mosley first joined here he was an usher Coy Dina y'all get you come on I need y'all to march one time now Laverne you don't go here but you will usher up at Mount Mariah get, get at the end of that line march around here one good time take God Come on, march around here for Mosley one time. the way that you'll be able to make it stand and survive if you keep holding to the unchanging hand of our God. That's right, Sister Pauline. We're holding to the hand of the Lord. My, my, my.
<laughs> we just come to celebrate a soldier. We just come to celebrate a soldier. <laughs> That's it. That's it, Missionary Pauline. Watch yourself. That's it, that's it. Hey! Clap your hands, give the Lord a hand clap of praise all over the house. Those of you who are watching in the virtual sanctuary, come on, give the Lord a virtual hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. At this time, we are going to have the reading of the obituary silently. Minister Gary Stewart will play something softly on the instrument as we silently read the obituary. Sister Robin Jefferson is going to come, prepare, come and prepare us sermonically. You knew it was coming. She's going to come and prepare us sermonically. You know we ain't got no choir. You know I was going to pull on whoever I saw. Amen. Amen. Sister Robin Jefferson is going to come and prepare us sermonically for the word of God, our eulogistic message. Amen. Amen.
saw me and with compassion called to me gently saying come in somebody say me when I was sinking so from the grave somebody folded me close to his bosom oh it was Jesus mighty to save somebody saw me when I, I was tempted, somebody showed me error of sin. Somebody helped me when I, I was stumbling.
Thank you, Sister Robin Jefferson and Sister Blair Green. Thank you, thank you so much. What a blessing it is to be together, even if it's only a few of us in the house of the Lord. Can you indulge me just one more time and give God a praise for the life of Deacon Horace Lee Mosley? Amen, amen. Deacon, Deacon Mosley has some things written out concerning his final well wishes. Scylla, he had some things written out concerning his final well wishes. And Deacon Mosley wanted to lie state in the church and have some singing and all going on. He was a deacon in the Lord's church, and so that's all right. And so we know that because of COVID-19, the choir and all was not able to gather like we normally would have. But I made sure I came up here for about 45 minutes and struck up the organ and played for Deacon Mosley. He was a, he was a kind gentleman. He was a good man. Still, I know what you're saying. I know he had his ways. He was still a good man. We're going to miss him. Indeed, we will miss him. Yesterday at the homegoing celebration of Sister Nisi, I used that text found in 1 Samuel. When Jonathan said to David that your seat would be empty and you would be missed. Indeed, that was fitting for her. And I would submit that it's also fitting for Deacon Mosley, there's an empty seat over in the corner at Greater Harvest, right there where Deacon Chandler's sitting at. And on Wednesdays, we'll miss him striking up and putting, on the, putting out the basket right here and just being present. As, as Deacon Chandler Smith said during his prayer, I'm told, doing my little remarks because I won't be long in my sermon. All right. As Deacon Chandler Smith said during his prayer, Deacon Mosley, whether he was able or unable to physically assist in something, he was still present. Your presence means a lot. You can just simply sit there and your presence can speak values. Deacon Mosley was one of them types, those types of individuals where even if he was not saying a lot at that time, his presence spoke louder than words. And so we continue to mourn his passing, but we celebrate his triumphant entry into the heavens as we all too must travel this road one day. And so it behooves us all to make sure we're ready for whenever our Lord calls our number. I invite your attention to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. This is my seventh sermon in five days. Mother Green, I ain't tired. I'm fine. <laughs> That's called grace. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing that he that has begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. I want to drop anchor at verse 3. I thank my God 
upon every remembrance of you. I want to tag this text using this thought in mind as we share eulogistically, as well as sermonically, this eulogistic sermon, if you will, from the thought, thank God for Deacon Mosley. Thank God for Deacon Mosley. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Thank you, Lord, for being our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, and together we say amen and amen. Thank God for Deacon Mosley. The Apostle Paul, from the confines of a Roman prison, decides to write this letter to the church at Philippi. He wants to express his gratitude unto the church at Philippi for all of their kind gestures, for their assistance that they have lent unto Paul during his incarceration. For those of you who don't know, Sister Charmaine, the church at Philippi decided to send a care package to the Roman prison to assist Paul during his time of incarceration. And his decision was to write back to them to simply say, thank you. This letter, Sister Carolyn, is one of the most grateful letters that the apostle writes. It's one of the most thankful letters that Paul pens. This letter is filled with so much joy and I find it so ironic that this letter will be filled with so much joy, seeing as though where and when Paul penned this letter, Deacon Cotman. He penned it while he was locked up, Robert, awaiting trial to see whether or not he would be executed. Yet he's thankful. Yet he's grateful. Yet he is joyful. It's joy weaved all throughout this letter to the Philippian church. And he teaches us, I would contend, that in spite of what you're going through, how you're going through it, be thankful. Be thankful. He, he, he reminds us that thanksgiving has nothing to do with what it is you are currently going through. But your gratitude should always be expressed, number one, unto God, and then secondly, unto your fellow man. He writes this letter to say thank you. And I love the way he pins it, especially in this third verse, as he lifts this introduction. He says to the Philippian church that every time I thank about you all. I thank my God for you. Every time you come to my mind, I have to give God praise for you. Not, not, not just for what you've done for me. Because as he gives his thanksgiving to the church of Philippi, he is not listing yet anything they've done. He says, I thank God for you, for you simply being who you are. I thank God for who you are. And, and, and it teaches us, my brothers and sisters, to be grateful not just for what people have done, but for simply who they are. And I stand this evening to testify that all week long, every time I thought about Deacon Mosley, I had to thank my God. Yes, some, some people just have that impact on your life. That when you come in contact with them, when you meet them, it's not about what they've done for you, Sister Robert, Robin, but it's about who they simply are. They just, they're just that type of individual where you've got to say, thank God for Deacon Mosley, and I say that he was that type of individual where I can't help but to testify even now. Thank God for Deacon Mosley. He then 
began to list some reasons why. Paul lists these reasons why he was thankful for the church of Philippi. After he's thankful for them simply being who they were, he began to list some reasons why he was thankful for them. Here's what he says, always in every prayer of mine, for always making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel. He says there was something that we had in common, and we had a fellowship within the gospel. In other words, we shared a like-minded thing that we were trying to accomplish. We all were trying to push the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, I thank God for you because there is a kindred spirit that we all have. All of us have the same aim. And our aim is to get together to push God's agenda. Uh, when I think about Deacon Mosley, I can't help but to think about the fact that we was on the same agenda. Our agenda was the same, and that was to push the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's good when you can find somebody when you're in sync that you're in sync with. It's good when you can find somebody that you, can, that you meet, that you can latch up with, that you can meet up with and you can talk about the same thing. You can meet up about the same thing. You can be thankful about the same thing. You, you can express the same feeling about some things. And that's what Deacon Mosley was. He was a type of guy where we could meet up and talk about the same thing. Meet up and get to, to discussing the same thing. We had a like-minded fellowship. Our aim, our agenda was in the same place. Uh, it's, it's a good thing when you come in contact with a man's man that you can have Deacon, Deacon Cotman conversation with and it ain't gotta be crazy conversation. You can have good, clean fun communicating one with another. We live in a world where we see so many types of people and people always are on the contrary. People are always against one another. This is why we got so much killing and stealing and destroying happening throughout our city even now because people can't come together on the same agenda. Oh, but it's good when you get got somebody who don't mind locking arms with you and sharing the same agenda. He, he had the same agenda. Deacon Mosey wanted to make sure that the gospel got out. And no, he wasn't a preacher. No, he didn't stand up and take the pulpit. But he made sure in his own ways he shared the gospel. Yes, ask some folk around the corner in his building. They'll tell you that in his own ways he shared the gospel. Ask some of the men as we stood outside talking in between worship and, and after service. He had his own way of sharing the gospel. He was like-minded. Here's what his Paul said. He said, I thank God for you. Because we're in the same fellowship together. We are in the fellowship of the gospel. And here it is. Here's what it says. From the first day until now. In other words, Paul testifies that we share this same gospel. And it did not just start today when I got in this Roman prison. But it started a while ago. And here it is. It did not start then and stop now. But he says from the first day until now. In other words, he speaks of a sense of consistency, if you will. Let the church say consistent. I thank God for Deacon Mosey, Deacon Chandler, because he was a consistent type of guy. He, di he didn't shift who he was, but every time he came in the building, he made his way back to the office. And in that deep, bird tone voice, he said, hey, pastor. He came on up to the sanctuary, took his seat, got himself together. And on Wednesdays, when it was time to open up the service, he made his way over here with Deacon Dosh Johnson. And the two of them together would open up noonday service. When it was a Sunday to get together for 830 service and open up in devotions, he didn't wait to get here the last minute, but he got here on time. 
made his way in the place, got his spirit together, opened up the hymn book, picked a song from Zion and began to sing the praises of God. He didn't just sing the praises of God, but he began to open up the floor for testimony service, making sure there was something on the hearts and in the minds of the saints that they needed to share with their fellow man. He didn't switch up who he was, but when he got here, he was Deacon Mosley. And on the day he left this earth, he was Deacon Mosley. And I wish that we could find some consistent people when it comes to the house of God. Yes, can I tell you, God's business deserves a sense of consistency. Let me say it again for somebody who's in the virtual sanctuary who need to hear that. God's business deserves a sense of consistency. No need in you being wavery with your assignment. But if God called you and assigned you to be something and do something, you ought to make sure you carry it out to the best of your ability every day of your life. That's the type of man Priscilla Deacon Mosley was. He, didn't, he wasn't just a deacon on Sunday. He was a deacon on Monday. Uh, God, I got to get out of here before I get in trouble. Uh, I got to get out of here before I get in trouble, Sister Robin, because the truth of the matter is there's some people who are church folk on Sunday but are different on Monday. Yes, there's some folk who are deacons on Sunday and they switch up to something else on Tuesday. There's some folk who don't mind wearing their deacon badge on Sunday, but when it gets to Friday night around 10 p.m., they switch up to somebody totally different. And Mosley was consistent in who he was. He wasn't just a deacon on Sunday, but on Monday and on Tuesday and on Wednesday and on Thursday and on Friday and on Saturday. And when Sunday came back around, he never had to put on his badge because he knew who he was. He did not just wear it on a badge, but he wear it, wore it down in his heart. God, I got to get out of here. Moses did not just wear deacon on a badge, but Moses wore deacon in his heart. Okay, let me teach somebody something who don't know. The word deacon is defined as servant. <laughs> a deacon, according to Acts, is a servant. One who Paul asks, yes, his disciple, to find him some good men of good rapport to help wait on the women and the homeless and the widows and those who are in need so that Paul can get himself together to preach the gospel. Uh-huh. He was a servant. And he did not just wear servant on his badge, but he wore servant in his heart. And when you wear servant on your heart, you don't have to worry about a badge because a badge won't define who you are in your heart. You can wear a badge and be hellish in your heart. You can wear a badge and be crazy in your mind. You can wear a badge and act silly every day, Monday through Friday, and try to put on when you get to the house of God on Sunday. But he wore a deacon on his heart. God, I got to get out of here. From the first day until now. I got to get out of here. I'll bid you do family. He says always in every prayer of mine. For your all, for you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. He said, you are, you, are, you are deserving of gratitude when I think about you because of our kindred spirit. We share in the fellowship of the gospel. But not only do we share in the fellowship of the gospel, but I thank God for your consistency. And when I thank God for, when I thank God, when I thank God for Deacon Mosley, I'm grateful for that like-minded spirit having the same agenda. But I thank God for his consistency. But here's what the Apostle Paul says. He says, I find myself confident concerning you all. I, 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 I have, I have a, a, a sense of confidence when I think about you, because here's what I can rest assured of, that the one that started a good work in you, I got to get out of here. 
He says, Priscilla, he shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I, I like how Paul says it because this sixth verse, Deacon Stokes really connects with the fifth verse, the B portion of the fifth verse, when he speaks about consistency, if you will. Because here's what he says. He says, you all are consistent. And since you are consistent, here's what I can bank on. That God that started the work in you will continue to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, now here's what I like, Sister Carolyn. He says, until the day of Jesus Christ. Well, just last week, Deacon Mosley, as they disconnected the two, as they began to clean them up, he walked into the day of Jesus Christ. <laughs> just, just, just the other week, he walked into the day of Jesus Christ. And here's what Paul says, I'm confident that your work will always continue as long as there's breath within your body. And just the other day, Deacon Mosley found that his work was done on this side because he recognized that that was the day that Jesus Christ would come for him. And he worked his work all the way up until the day of Jesus Christ that came for him. And I thank my God every time I think about Deacon Mosley because when I think about Deacon Mosley, I can't help but to thank God that he worked who he was up until the day of Jesus Christ. That's why, Sister Priscilla, when we were closing the casket, I decided to take off his deacon badge and hand it over to the family because where he is now, he don't need a deacon badge. Yes, where he is now, he won't have to use an usher badge. Where he is now, he won't have to worry about doing devotions because every day is Sunday and the Sabbath will have no end. Yes, where he is now, he don't have to worry about putting on a red tie for communion because he's in the presence of the Lord. And he doesn't have to worry about testifying that as often as you do this, he'll show the Lord's death until it comes. Because even now, he's in the place where the angels are saying, holy, holy, Lord God almighty, the earth is filled with his glory. Good evening, family. Good evening, greater harvest. But I just dropped by here to testify that I thank my God for Deacon Mosley because every time I go back down memory lane, I can't help but to think about how we shared in the fellowship, how we came to church on Sunday, how we came to church on Wednesday, and we sung our little song, we did our little prayer, we did our little dance, and we went on back down the steps, made our way back to our destinations. But even right now, Deacon Mosley ain't got to go back down the steps. He don't have to go back in the house. He don't have to get back in the car. Because even now, he's somewhere around the throne. And if you miss him, from singing down here and you can't find him no more go on up to Mount Zion for he'll be singing over there if you miss him from testifying down here and you can't find him no more go on up to Mount Zion for he'll be testifying over there if you miss him from doing devotions down here and you can't find him no more, come on up to Mount Zion 
for he'll be doing it over there. Good evening, Greater Harvest. Good evening, Mosley family. Good evening, friends and saints. But I rose to tell somebody that I thank my God for Deacon Mosley. Good night, Deacon Mosley. You sung your song. Good night, Deacon Mosley. You said your prayer. Good night, Deacon Mosley. You've done your dance. Now you got to go where you belong because God has willed it so. And I got good news for you. If you miss him a little while, well, you just hold on because I got a word for you. If you're saved, if you're sanctified, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you'll be able to testify that one day I'll see him on the other side. But until then, I'ma bid you farewell. Until then, I'ma bid you adieu. You fought your fight. You've kept the faith. You finished your race. And now is laid up for you a crown of righteousness. What the righteous king shall place on you. And not only to you, but unto all of you who love his appearing. Is there anybody here that can thank God for Deacon Mosley? Deacon Mosley, you did your work down here. We gonna miss you on this side. But every time I think about you, I gotta say thank you, Jesus. Every time I think about him, I gotta say thank you, Jesus. Every time I think about him, I gotta say thank you, Jesus. Am I by myself? Is there anybody that gotta say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. 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 We gonna miss you, but thank you, Jesus. I'm gonna miss seeing you, but thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When I, when I think about you, I thank God for every remembrance of you. We got memories. He's no longer physically here, but we have memories. We, we have memories. And when I have those memories, those fond experiences, I just got to say thank you, Jesus, for Deacon Mosley. Hallelujah. Thank God for Deacon Mosley. Thank, thank God for Deacon Mosley. Can you just take 10 seconds and thank God for the life, for the witness, for the testimony of Deacon Horace Lee Mosley. Right before our morticians come, I want to make sure no one's came to this place, either in person or virtually, and you don't know Jesus Christ. Quickly, I want to make sure you know Jesus Christ. You could be physically in the building or watching virtually in our virtual sanctuaries over the live stream. I want you to know today, it's a wonderful evening to get to know Jesus. Beautiful Sunday evening. 
to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know him as your Savior, as your Lord, get to know him. Don't wait for tomorrow. Do it today. Tomorrow's not promised to none of us. Not none of us. We don't have to wake up tomorrow. But if God will it so, will it so, we'll be grateful. So it behooves us all to make sure we're saved. If you don't know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sins, here's what the Bible says. Confess Jesus with your mouth and believe him in your heart. He'll save you and raise you. He'll deliver you and set you free. If you don't know him, get to know him today. Confess him and believe him. That's our aim. That's what we want to make sure you do. We want to make sure you know Jesus Christ. And the going gets tough and the hills hard to climb. Yes, I started out a long time ago. There is no doubt, there is no doubt in my mind, in my mind. To make Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, my choice. Our morticians are coming even now. They're going to give us our final instructions. Afterwards, I'll do the benediction tonight for those of you who will not be traveling the last mile tomorrow morning. On behalf of this family, on behalf of this ministry and church family, we want to thank God for the William C. Brown Community Funeral Home, who did a fantastic job. With laying, with laying Deacon Horace Mosley to rest. Uh, let me put this plug in. I'm the pastor so I can plug in when I want to. It, all these faces are familiar to y'all. If y'all ain't realize, y'all got uh, funeral directors in your church. And so they're, they're not just the funeral directors to serve the night, but they are church members as well of the late Deacon Horace Mosley. Sister Charmaine Brown, Brother Chris Brown, they are the sons of uh, William C. Brown. And so they own it as a family owned and operated. They are the daughters, I'm sorry Charmaine, she been and text me later. They're the daughters and son of, of Mr. William C. Brown. It's a family owned and operated establishment, been in business for over 40 years and so we're praying with, for, with them and for them. Y'all know Corey Lockins. He worked for, worked for them as well. Amen. We'll receive our final, our final instructions before we do our dismissal from this place. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Family and friends, as always, we like to thank God for the message, but most of all, thank God for the messenger. The family will be meeting at our funeral home, 1206 West North Avenue, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. to follow Deacon Mosley to Garrison Forest Veteran Cemetery. For those of you who wish to travel with us, please be there at 8.30 or between 8.30 and 8.45. We will be leaving at 9 a.m. For those of you who care to meet us directly at the cemetery, Garrison Forest Veteran Cemetery in Owings Mills, Maryland, please meet us at the cemetery by 9.45 a.m for military honors will begin promptly at 10 a.m. At this time, the cemetery does not have um, restrictions on the amount of people that can attend. So if anyone would care to take this last mile of the way with Deacon Mosley, we encourage you to do so tomorrow. For those of you who are, who are not able to join us, we thank you so much for joining this family. Those of you who are virtual, thank you so much for joining this family and continue to keep them in your prayers. We're back in the hands of the pastor. We're all rising to our feet to receive the benediction and final blessing from this place. Now may the grace of the Lord, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with all of you God's people, henceforth now and forevermore. And the people of God said amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Any pallbearers, please meet us in the rear. Any pallbearers, please meet us in the rear. Or any
any Man. able body male. If you're able body, meet us in the rear. Y'all know these steps at Harvest. Able body, meet us in the rear. Smith, Johnson, y'all know. Able